Hi boys, it's Harm None. Today we're going to be going over what to buy and what to avoid this week in GTA Online. I have a little bit of an extra intro here because you may notice that I have not uploaded an update week video and that is by design this week. I'm skipping it just to see if it affects how good this video does. By the way, I also want to say you guys have been killing it on the what to buy and what to avoid videos. So many new subscribers coming to the channel, joining up, and I really do appreciate it, man, because a lot of you guys watch but don't subscribe. So if you're one of those people, you should definitely consider subscribing to my channel. Now, of course, we're going to get into what to buy and what to avoid this week in GTA Online. But before we do that, we have to talk about the car sitting here behind me. This is, of course, the Benefactor LM87, which is discounted this week by 40% off. Pretty good discount and a really, really good car. You guys should definitely consider picking one of these up. We are gonna talk about it a little bit more later in this video, but before we do that, of course, we do have to talk about how to make some money this week in GTA Online, and we do have a couple of different ways to earn some money this week that are paying double. So let's go ahead and talk about it. First up, we have double money and double RP on Madrazo hits, which are relatively new. Those are going to be double money and double RP as well. We also have double money and double RP on Assault on ATT16, which is a very, very fun game mode and pays shockingly well. On double money and double RP, this will pay you between, I'd say $170,000 around to like $300,000 around, which is crazy. It's very, very good. You guys should definitely consider playing Assault on ATT-16 this week in GTA Online. It's it's an absolute blast. Uh, probably going to be playing this quite a bit this week, I would say. And last but not least, for bonus money, we do have double money and double RP on the Extraction game mode. Extraction's pretty fun. Not going to lie, I would definitely recommend playing this. At some point this week, it is a pretty good time. Definitely do recommend it. Now, unfortunately, that's it for bonus money this week. We don't have any crazy business bonuses or anything really going on like that. Now, you can complete three Madrazo hits this week and receive $100,000, uh, which is kind of a nice bonus to have as well. But we do have some really good discounts this week as well. So let's go ahead and start talking about those. Starting off with Legendary Motor Sport, we do have a discount on the relatively new Balakan and Visage, which is an Amani Tech capable electric rear wheel drive sports car. Now for 25% off, this is one that is slightly more tempting because of its insanely high original price of just near two and a half million dollars. Now for 1.8, it's a lot more reasonable, but at the end of the day, unfortunately, this thing does not have an armor plating upgrade, so it's not that awesome of an Amani Tech vehicle. It also does not get the front mounted machine guns that some Omani Tech vehicles do, which is yet another disappointment. For $1.8 million, it's like kind of more tempting because it is 25% off, obviously, but I still think generally that I would avoid picking up the Envisage this week in GTA Online despite the pretty hefty discount. It is kind of tempting, but I would say for most people, you will probably be disappointed with this car. Now scrolling a little further down on Legendary, we will find the Benefactor LM87 for $1,749,000. Now this is one of the fastest supercars in GTA Online when it comes to racing. So for that reason, I would say it is worth purchasing. It's also kind of unique in the fact that it is a one-seater vehicle, but the best part of all is if you play on the PC platform, this thing has a speed glitch, which is pretty crazy. It can get going super, super fast using the speed glitch and all you have to do is literally drive it and the more fps you have the better so the lm87 is a very quick way to get around on the pc platform for one million seven hundred and forty nine thousand dollars though based purely on the performance of it i would say it is a car that is worthy of picking up the downforce is crazy the handling's really good the acceleration's quite good the top speed is decent especially obviously if you have the speed glitch on your platform but overall the lm87 is an awesome vehicle and it does have some pretty good customization it is one that i would recommend this week if you're into racing or if you're on pc now, if you're not into either of those things, you could probably avoid buying it this week, honestly, but I still think it is a really good car. And for that reason, I would recommend it to those people at least. A little further down on Legendary, we also have the Grotti Furia available this week, and it is discounted pretty significantly. It is 40% off, similar to the Benefactor LM87 as well. Now, if you have the trade prices going for just under 
$1,250,000. And if you don't have the trade price, it's going for just under $1,650,000. Now for either of these prices, it is a pretty decent supercar. It's all wheel drive. It has some really nice customization and I think it looks fantastic. However, based on today's kind of performance standards, it's not the greatest car of all time, but it is better than some other cars that you may consider in some ways. For example, the Pegasi Ignis, the regular one, has a very similar performance stature to this thing, but the Furia is actually faster in a straight line, oddly enough. The Furia is a really cool car, it's got some really unique features. Now, if you have the trade press, I would say it is worth purchasing for sure, but if you don't have the trade press, I'd say I'm kinda on the fence about it because it is a cool car, and it's really nice to customize, really nice to drive, everything like that, but it's not something like the LM87, which for another 100 grand will win you supercar races. This thing is just gonna be fun to drive around in free mode. And if that sounds like it's for you, then I would definitely say the Furia is probably better than the LM87. If you just want a car to customize and drive around in free mode, I think this thing's actually superior. You're just gonna get around a little bit slower. So do keep that in mind. The Furia is one that I can't really recommend, but I can't not recommend it either. So make your choices. And of course, last but not least on Legendary Motorsport, we also have the Gallivanter Baller STD. Coming in at $1,200,500, down from $1.7 million. Now, the Baller STD is a pretty awesome car. It is Imani Tech capable, similar to the Balakan and Visage that we talked about earlier. And like it, it does not have armor plating. However, it does have bullet resistant windows, which is a pretty interesting feature and kind of a surprising one as well. However, it does not have the front mounted machine guns, which is something to keep in mind. Now, contrary to the Balakan and Visage, this thing is actually a pretty good vehicle, especially within its category. The Envisage is not a very fast sports car. However, the Baller STD is one of the very fastest SUVs in GTA Online. So if you do SUV races, this is one that you may want to consider picking up. Plus, it does have the missile lock on jammer and Imani Tech and things like that as well as the bulletproof windows, which is a pretty good feature. And for just over $1,200,000, I don't really think you can go wrong with it. Plus, the customization is pretty awesome, and as far as Gallivanter Ballers go, this is by far the best one that we have in the entire game, handling-wise and just general performance-wise. It's absolutely awesome to drive, it looks really good, the customization's awesome, and it's definitely one that I would recommend to pick up this week for sure. Over on Warstock Cash and Carry, we have a couple discounts. One of them is going to be on the Kurtz 31 Patrol Boat. Please, for the love of God, do not make the mistake of buying this vehicle. Now, it is discounted and it is 40% off, but it is by no means worth purchasing. It's a very cool looking, but you are never going to use a boat in GTA Online. Like 99.8% of the time, this will be completely irrelevant to you. Plus, there's also other boats that are armed that are much better than the Kurtz. I really like this thing because I think it's such a unique vehicle for GTA Online. But at the end of the day, this thing is pure trash. And of course, it is a Pegasus vehicle, as I'm sure you were expecting, but it does note that as well right here. So uh, please do not buy the Kurtz 31. Now, if you were going to buy it at some point anyway, or if you've been looking at it and you really want it and you've bought everything else there is to buy in GTA Online and you have all the businesses and everything like that, then you might have a little bit of a different story because if you're buying it as like a novelty item and you know it's not that awesome and you're not going to use it very much, it might be worth purchasing to you, but for the vast majority of players, you should not buy the Kurtz 31 patrol boat. It is going to be useless to almost all of you. So please keep that in mind. Now we have two more discounts on Legendary. One is on the HVY Barrage or the Heavy Barrage, as some people like to tell me in the comment section all the time. It's pronounced. And we also have the P45 Nakoda. Now we're going to talk about the Barrage first. The Barrage is just a worse night shark and insurgent pickup custom basically it can take four rpgs and it can take about eight homing missiles it's not that awesome and it sucks to drive it's really not that good of a vehicle however for one million two hundred seventy two thousand dollars not the worst purchase you can make but at the same time that is more than a night shark and a night shark is better in almost every single way so you may want to keep that in mind customization wise this thing's pretty cool now if you do have the trade price for it by some miracle 
it might be worth purchasing. For under a mil, you kinda can't really mess up with it. Like, it's a pretty cool vehicle in that regard. And it does have some armor, it does have some, you know, guns on it, things like that. So it's not like it's useless, it's just not as good as some of its direct competitors that are similarly priced. If you can get it for the trade price, it might be worth it. If you already have a Night Shark and an Insurgent Pickup Custom and you really just want another militarized vehicle, it may be worth picking up for just under 1.3 mil. But for the majority of you, I would definitely say the Night Shark is going to do better, and so is the Insurgent Pickup Custom. So, for those reasons, I would say, for most people, avoid buying the Barrage. On to the P45 Nakata. Now, I do have a customization out on my channel of this vehicle, if you guys are interested to know a little bit more about it. But from what I do remember, it's pretty disappointing. It's not that awesome of a vehicle. Now, it is armable, which is cool. The guns on it kind of don't do very well because they're so spread apart and they fire just kind of weirdly and they don't do that much damage. With that being said, still kind of cool. It does also have bombs as well as homing missiles and non-homing missiles that can be equipped on it as well. For 1.6 or just under 1.6, it's not a bad plane, especially if you don't have any other planes in GTA Online, it might be worth picking up for you. But if you've already got like a Hydra or something like that, or a Rogue, for example, uh, either of those planes are going to do better than the Nakata is, unfortunately. Also, you're going to need to own a hangar in order to purchase it in the first place. So if you don't own a hangar, don't even bother. But if you do own a hangar and you might, you know, you don't have any other planes in the game, getting this one on discount isn't necessarily a bad idea. But at the same time, you can also buy a Rogue for right around this same price, and that will just kind of do better. It is a really cool plane. The livery options are really sick on it. It flies kind of decently, but at the end of the day, it's just not really worth the money, I don't think. For the majority of people, um, like I said, if you're a new player and you don't have a plane in GTA yet, this might be a good one to purchase, but at the same time, I would maybe just wait for other things to go on discount or just buy a Rogue. Uh, if you're looking for it to complete your collection of planes, then yeah, by all means, definitely get it while it's on sale, you might as well. Uh, but just for either of these prices, I don't know, the trade price is one thing. For under 1.2, it's not bad, but for just under 1.6, I feel like it's like, it's, it's on the verge, you know? It's hard for me to say no to it, but it's also hard for me to recommend it. So it really depends on your situation. If you already have a ton of planes, don't buy it. If you don't have any planes and you're looking for a somewhat decent one and you have a hangar, you may want to consider it even at the 1.6 price range. And with that being said, guys, that's it for the vehicles I can show you on the websites. Now it's time to go to the casino as well as the LS car meet and all the dealerships and talk about the vehicles that are available this week in GTA Online that are removed and some of them that are not. So let's go. All right, guys, within the LS car meet, we have the Fister Neon available to be won this week. This is definitely a car that I would go for. It's based off of the Porsche Taycan in real life. Pretty cool. I would say you gotta come to the casino and try to win this thing every day. It goes for 1.5 mil regularly. So if you can get it for free, that's obviously a huge win. Within the LS car meet, we have the Obey 8F Drafter available to be won this week. And in order to win it, you're gonna have to place top three for four days in a row. Not a terrible challenge for this vehicle. It is a pretty cool one. It goes for in the seven to $800,000 range and it does have some pretty nice customization. Kind of confused why it's in here because I feel like we got it not that long ago, but for placing top three for four days in a row, it's not a bad car. I would definitely try to win this one if you can. And within the LS car meet, we do have three removed vehicles available to be purchased this week, and they are all on sale, and they are all 30% off. Starting off on the left, we have the Vapid Click. Regularly goes for about $900,000, and this week it's on sale for $636,000. For that price, it's pretty cool. It used to be the fastest muscle car in the entire game for a long, long time, but nowadays it's been overshadowed by things like the Bravado Buffalo STX, as well as even things like the Declassy Vigoro ZX, especially with HSW and, uh, you know, the Dominator GT, things like that. Still kind of a cool car, has some decent enough customization, kind of interesting, but for 636K, I can't necessarily super recommend it, but it is removed, so keep that in mind for sure. In the middle, we have the Ubermacht Revolter, which is another removed vehicle, and it is 30% off, meaning that it's going for $1,127,000 this week, and for that price, I just don't think I can recommend it. It has absolutely no customization, except for the fact that you can put front-mounted machine guns on it. 
They're not that good either, by the way. They're like equivalent to like the Night Shark or the Fister Comet Safari. So really not that awesome. Uh, but it is kind of a nice feature to be able to have. But for 1,127k, it's kind of a little steep in my opinion. It is pretty quick. It's all wheel drive. It's, you know, good looking and everything like that. But uh, yeah, no customization either, which is kind of really lame other than like liveries and the machine guns. So keep that in mind for sure. But yeah, I don't really recommend it. And last but not least, out of the three, we have the Vapid FMJ and it's going for 1,225,000 this week. For that price, I can't necessarily recommend it either because it's in the supers category and it's not that awesome of a vehicle, but it is removed. So if that means anything to you and you're looking for one of these, you may want to consider purchasing it. But overall, it's not that awesome of a vehicle. And for 1,225K, I don't think I can necessarily recommend it. Still kind of a cool car though. All right, and within Simeon's dealership, we have a few more removed vehicles in here and some more vehicles that are on sale, like the Pegasi Torero, which is sitting here in the back left, obviously based off of the Lamborghini Countach, pretty iconic. It is on sale this week for $698,600. For that price, you're getting a terrible handling sports classic car, but one that is kind of cool at the same time because it's a Countach. For 700k, I can't recommend it based on performance in any way, shape, or form. It's purely just to have as a vehicle that sits in your garage because it really does suck to drive, and I do honestly mean that, guys. The customization is pretty cool, though. So this is one I can't recommend unless you're planning on just keeping it in a garage and you've already bought you know everything that actually matters in the game. It's a cool car, but yeah, it, it sucks to drive. Next up, we have the Karen 190Z, a very customizable car and one that is on sale this week as well for $650,000. Now for that price, the Karen 190Z is okay. It does have a lot of really awesome customization, but one of the features of it is a wide body kit, which makes it look ridiculous because of course you cannot poke the wheels out at all. Performance wise, it's not great in any way, shape or form, but you're not buying it for performance anyways, you're buying it for customization for 650K. It's kind of one very similar to the Torero where it's like it drives a lot better than the Torero does, but it's also kind of slower in a straight line and just generally I don't know, isn't quite as cool in my opinion, but still a cool car nonetheless with a lot of customization, but you're not buying it for the driving experience whatsoever or to win races. So just as long as you know that, everything's all good. Next up, we also of course have the Vapid Hustler, which I don't think is actually a removed vehicle and it's going for $645,000. For that price, I, I just, I can't do it. I cannot recommend it. Um, it's just way too much money and there's no discount on it either. So do keep that in mind. Over here, we do have the Vapid Riata, which is removed and it goes for $385,000 if I'm not mistaken. Oh, with delivery, it's 403,000. Very cool vehicle though, very customizable and a very good off-roader as well. Now it's not gonna win you any off-road class races, but just as an off-road vehicle in general, it is pretty darn good. I would say to pick up the Riata this week because it's removed and it goes for 385k, which is not a bad price. Uh, Performance-wise though, not gonna win you any races, like I said, but just as a cool vehicle to have, and being that it's so cheap and it's so good off-road and everything, if you're into off-roading, I'd say buy it. If not, you can avoid it, but pretty cool vehicle nonetheless. And of course, last but not least, in Simeons, we got the Dinka Thrust. The Dinka Thrust goes for 75 grand. For 75 grand, you can't go wrong no matter what. Very cool vehicle, has uh, has the exhaust there and everything like that. I don't think it has much in the way of customization, if I do remember correctly. So that is something to keep in mind for sure. And in luxury autos, we got two new vehicles. Nothing really interesting about them either. Uh, you got the Castigator on the right, and we got the Balakan Envisage on the left. We were doing kind of okay for a bit there, Rockstar, but uh, we're back to it, so it's good to see you're back to your old ways. Within the Chop Shop, these are the vehicles that are available to be stolen this week. Unfortunately, none of them are claimable, of course. Starting off, we have the Dubachi Champion. In order to get that, you're going to need to complete the Cargo Ship Robbery. For the Karen Everon, you will need to complete the McTony Robbery. And for the Ubermacht Sentinel Classic, you need to complete the Podium Robbery. And of course, last but not least, we have to go over the time trials. Your RC Bandito time trial today is Construction Site 1. Your Junk Energy time trial today is Sewer System. Your regular time trial is, of course, Fort Zancudo. And your HSW time trial starts up here at the Quartz Building and goes all the way to the base of Mount Gordeaux. 
Anyway, guys, there you have it. That has been it for what to buy and what to avoid this week in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, I want to ask you guys if you do enjoy just having what to buy and what to avoid in GTA Online in the week, I would like you to comment a one in the comment section down below. But if you do want me to do the update week still, as well as what to buy and what to avoid, comment a two in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, dislike if you don't, of course, consider subscribing if you guys are new, or if you watch my content already, you should subscribe anyways. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Peace.